Hi, Todd. Hey, Sarah. How are you? Good. How are you? Oh, not bad. So I heard you were from San Francisco. That's right. Yeah, I was born there, and I lived in the city for many years. Cool. What is the most interesting thing about your city? Well, San Francisco has many interesting things, but the most interesting thing is probably the architecture. There's lots of very unique buildings, um, and the most unique building is probably the Transamerica building. It's a building like a pyramid, and it's nice. Wow, that's really cool. Mm -hmm. What is the most expensive area in San Francisco? Well, it is very, very expensive. Um, the most expensive area is a place called Pacific Heights, and it's on the highest hill in San Francisco, and it overlooks the bay. It's a really, really beautiful place. Mm. That, that area, by far, has the best views of the city. Mm. What is the most beautiful place in San Francisco? Mm. Well, actually, the most beautiful place is outside the city. It's a place called Mere Woods, and it has the tallest trees in the world. And some of these trees are really old. They're the oldest trees in North America. Some of them are over 2,000 years old. Wow. Sounds like some place I would like to see. So it sounds really expensive. Where's the cheapest place to live? The cheapest place to live is a place called Sunset. And Sunset is on the uh, west side. And the houses are kind of old and they're a little bit cheap. But one thing about Sunset is it has the nicest view of the ocean. And you could watch the sunset every night. That's why it's called the Sunset Area. Hmm. If I wanted to go there, when is the best time to visit? Ooh, the best time is probably in the fall because that's when the weather is the nicest. It's not too cold and it's not too hot and it doesn't rain that much. So when would be the worst time to visit? The worst time to visit would be probably February and March um, because February and March are the coldest and wettest months. So, well, March isn't that cold, but sometimes it's wet, so it rains a lot. Wow, that sounds really great. I want to go there. Yeah, you should. It's a great place. Hey, Todd. I know you've traveled a lot. What countries have you lived in? I've lived in three countries. Um, I've traveled to many, many countries, but I've actually lived in three. I lived in England for one year. Mm -hmm. I lived in Thailand for four years. And I have lived in Japan for 15 years. Wow. So when you lived in England, why did you live there? It was the first country I traveled to after college, and I had a work permit, a work visa, for one year. And I worked at a pub restaurant, which was great. It was in the countryside, mm -hmm. and I really enjoyed it. And then I did that for six months. Um, I lived near Cambridge, so I was near Cambridge University. Mm -hmm. And then after that, I moved to London. And again, I worked at a restaurant, and I lived in London and just worked. Wow. So it was after college. How old were you? I was 23 years old. Oh, and living in London, that must have been fun. It was fun. And interestingly, when I went to England, I could not speak English. So I could not understand British people. Uh, it took me maybe two months before I could understand their English. So it was very, very difficult to understand British people when I first moved there. Ah, so you liked it. I did like England. It was fun. It was my first country. Um, but the weather was cold for me. Uh -huh. So I'm from California, right. and California in the United States is very warm. So I didn't like the weather, but that's okay because all British people don't like the weather too. Oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> Everybody complains about the weather. Ah, uh, so after England, did you move someplace warmer? I did. Uh, right after England, I moved to Thailand, and I lived in Thailand for over four years. Wow. Why did you live in Thailand? Uh, I was traveling, and in Thailand, I had no money, and I needed a job, and I wanted to stay in Thailand, so I became an English teacher. Really? 
Yeah. Did you teach English there for four years? I did. So I went there and I began teaching English. Then I got a teaching、uh, course certificate to teach English in Thailand, and I really enjoyed it. The Thai students were really fun, and Thailand is a great place to live because the weather is really nice,、mm -hmm. the people are really friendly, and the food is delicious. It has the best food in the world, I think. I've also heard that Thailand is beautiful. Is it true? It is. It has many, many beautiful islands, and it has、uh, lots of beautiful places with nature in the mountains. It has jungles. It has beautiful beaches. So it's a nice place to live.、Mm, so you liked Thailand too? I did. Thailand was great. Yeah.、Mm, so England, Thailand. You said next was Japan. Yeah. So next was Japan,、um, and Japan's nice. I am a teacher, an English teacher in Japan, and I love teaching English in Japan. Like Thailand, the food is really, really good. The people are nice. The scenery is really beautiful. So Japan is really nice. Are there fun things to do in Japan? Yes, actually, I like Japan the most because you get everything. You get lots of beautiful nature,、mm -hmm. so you can go hiking. You can go see beautiful beaches. You can go to really nice islands. But also, Japan has many, many nice cities. So、um, you can go to Tokyo, Osaka, Fukuoka, and the cities have lots to do. There's good shopping, great restaurants.、Um, it's easy to travel in Japan by train and bus, so it's really nice. Wow, that sounds like the best of both worlds. Yeah, it is definitely a good place to live. So, John. Do you like to play golf? Well, no, I don't play golf very much, but I play disc golf. Disc golf? What's that? Well, some people call it frisbee golf. Basically, there are courses at parks. It's similar to golf, but the courses are much smaller. You use frisbees or flying discs, and you have to throw it. So it's different from golf. You're not aiming for a small hole, but actually, you need to throw the frisbee into a basket. Oh, that sounds fun! Is it very easy? Well, it can be easy, or it can be very difficult. It depends on the course. Many different parks have different disc golf courses, and you can be a easy beginner. Or you can be an expert. It all depends on how much you want to get involved. I see. My friends and I, we're beginners, so we just like to have fun. So we just do the easy courses and have a good time. I、ah. think it's relaxing. So you only need one frisbee? Well, actually, it's better to have two or three. You can play with one, but in fact, when you learn more about disc golf, there are different sizes and weights of the discs. Why would you want a different size disc? Well, it's similar to the clubs in golf. When you throw your first throw, you want it to go very far,、mm -hmm. so you should use a heavier disc. But When you're near the basket, you should make a short throw, so you want a lightweight disc. I see. That's interesting. Yeah. So as I said, when you want to become an expert, you have to spend more money to get better equipment. It's like any sport, I guess. In fact, they have disc golf competitions now, so you can even participate in a tournament and win some prize money. Did you ever compete? Oh no, I'm just a beginner. I don't think I want to be too serious about it. So golf has 18 holes. How about disc golf? Does it have 18 holes too? Well, not usually. Golf courses are very large, but disc golf courses are usually found in parks. So they usually have only six holes. But you can play 18 holes by doing all six three times each. I see. 
How do you keep score? Scorekeeping is like real golf. So the winner should have the lowest score. Every time you throw a frisbee or a flying disc, you have to mark one point. Mm. So if you can do a hole in one, that means you can hit the basket on your first try. Then you'll only have one point. That's best. Mm -hmm. But I'm not that good at it. So usually I have three or four points for each course. I see. You said disc golf is at the park. Do you have little kids playing in the middle of the course? Sometimes the kids, of course, they can play wherever they want. And the courses do go through the park where kids play. So we have to be very careful. And we have to use good sportsmanship to wait for the course to be clear. Mm. It sounds like a lot of fun. It is fun. Maybe you can join us next time. That sounds great. Thank you. So, Miss Naomi from, where is it you're from? Wales. Wales, okay. So, and how old are you now? I'm 11. 11, okay. So, that means you are in, what would that be, junior school, secondary school? Uh, junior school. Junior school, okay. And, um, so, what grade is that in junior school? Six. Oh, grade six, okay. Tell me about your school. What kind of subjects do you study in junior school? We study art and maths and science and English and geography and history and RE. RE? What, what's RE? Religious education. Ah, okay. And uh, so you go to school from what time in the morning? About quarter to nine and it starts at five past. The first class is at five yeah. past. And then um, do you get a break? We get a break at half past ten and then lunch at twelve o'clock. Twelve, oh, twelve o'clock for how long? For an hour. An hour? Oh, nice. And then what, what do you do for lunch in, in Wales? Do, you, do, you have, do they have like a cafeteria where they cook for you? Or? Yeah, they have that and you can bring sandwiches. Oh, so you can bring your own sandwiches instead? Yeah. Okay. Have, what do you do? I normally bring sandwiches. Okay. Oh, is that because the dinners are no good, or...? They're okay, but I don't really like them as much as sandwiches. Oh, okay. And what, what kind of food do they, do they serve up in the, in the canteen? Uh, they serve roast dinners and... Roast dinners? Yeah. What's a roast dinner? It's like a meat and vegetables. Okay. Okay. Sounds very simple. <laughs> yeah. And pizza and chips and... Um, ham and all sorts of stuff. Oh, okay. Oh, it sounds good. And do they give you lots of homework? No. Oh, really? No. Oh, that's good to hear. So what's your favourite subject then in, in junior school? Art. Art? Yeah. Okay, why is that? I don't know. I just like um, painting and drawing. Okay. And then what's the, what's the subject that you find most boring? Maths. Maths? Yeah. Oh, really? Yeah, I'm not a big fan of maths. <laughs> <laughs> so I guess uh, if you're in grade six, you'll be going on to your next school soon? Yeah, secondary school. Okay. And uh, are you looking forward to that? Yeah. Okay. Great. Okay, well, it's very nice talking to you and good luck in your next <laughs> school. Hi, I'm Mari. I'm here with Ron. Ron is from Hawaii. So, Ron, what's so special about Hawaii? Well, Hawaii is my home, but to people not from Hawaii, I think Hawaii is famous for its nice weather. It's uh, warm all year round. Also, it's known for its beaches. The beaches are very nice, and it's also known for its warm hospitality. The people are also very nice. So can you tell me more about the weather? It's always sunny. It never rains. It does rain, but often it rains and is sunny at the same time, so we have a lot of rainbows. 
So Hawaii is also famous for rainbows. That's nice. Um, can you tell me more about the beach? We have beaches on all shores of the island, of all our islands. So there's many beaches to choose from. And often, some, some beaches have big waves, some beaches have small waves, and you can choose which beach to go to depending on whether you want to surf in big waves or you want to swim where there's no waves. Can you tell me maybe about the nature in Hawaii? We have forests, so there's lots of animals like birds and small animals like um, wallabies. We have Hawaiian wallabies and um, they live in the forest. What's a wallaby? Wallabies, um, they're those little um, mammals. They came from Australia, and they were introduced to Hawaii, and now they're wild in Hawaii, and they've become their own species. What do they look like? They look like, they look like little kangaroos, I, I think. Hmm, interesting. Uh, any other interesti interesting animals in Hawaii? We have a lot of pigs, wild pigs. We like to go hunting for them, and we like to eat them. Are there any animals that live in the sea? There, we have nice coral reefs, so there's lots of beautiful fish in our coral reefs, and many people like to go snorkeling to look at our reefs. We also have turtles and um, seals in Hawaii. Are there any w whales? We do have whales during the months of March until f February, I believe. They come from Alaska, and they come to Hawaii during those months, and then they return to Alaska. Wow, there are a lot of animals that live in Hawaii. Sounds like a great place to visit. So, Anna, you're from Portugal, right? Yeah, right. Okay, because um, I'm actually thinking of going to visit uh, Europe this summer, and I thought Portugal would be a great place to visit. Oh, yeah, Portugal is great, especially in the summer. Um, it will be really warm, and um, you can go to lots of places in Portugal. Um, you can go to the north, where we have a lot of mountains, and um, you can do all kinds of activities like archery and horse riding. Oh, wow, that's interesting. Well, actually, I was thinking of going to the beach. Can you, can you give me some advice for what's the best time of year to go when perhaps there are not too many tourists around? Oh, yeah, if you want to avoid tourists, you should definitely not come in August. Um, August is really crowded, and there are just so many people in the south of Portugal. Uh, you can try to come in June. Uh, June right. is already warm, but there are not too many people, so it will be easier for you to find accommodation. There are some really nice hotels and hostels around. <laughs> so... Um, what kind of place were you thinking of staying in? Well, actually, I don't really mind too much. Um, I I think I'd like to see what it's like to f maybe for, for 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 normal people in Portugal what it would be like to go on holiday and and have an authentic Portuguese experience. So maybe maybe I I don't really want to stay in a big international hotel. What what what's a typical Portuguese place to stay in that's nice for a summer holiday. Mm, that's interesting. Yeah, in that case, you should definitely avoid the big hotels or any mm -hmm. hostels. There are some um, apartments that you can rent. So you can just live in an apartment by the beach. All right. And um, yeah, they're just in a normal building with other Portuguese people. But you can rent it and stay there. And it's really close to the beach it's like a one minute walk so really? it will be really convenient for you and is this this is by the atlantic ocean yes yes it is all right that's that's uh, sounds like a very good idea staying at an apartment um how much should i budget for that hmm i am not really sure um 
it will probably be a bit more expensive mm -hmm. than a hotel. Really? But mm, not in the long term. You can pay about 30 euros per night, I think. Wow, that's for cheap. For a nice location, <laughs> yeah. Uh, if you come with friends, though, you can also rent a villa. We have some villas also <gasps> by the beach. Does it have a swimming pool? It does have a swimming wow. pool. And they have plenty of rooms. So if you want to come with a big group, that's... Definitely a better option. That sounds like a great idea. I can invite my colleagues along. So, do you have any final tips for me um, for my holiday in Portugal? Well, I mean, if you want to stay in the south, in the Algarve, then I definitely recommend you check out the nightlife. Um, it can be really lively and there are night markets and um, where you can buy lots of souvenirs and people just hang around. So, I definitely recommend that. Okay, and what was the name again? The Algarve. The Algarve, yeah. That's the southern part of Portugal, Ooh. so you can't miss it. Got to remember that. Thank you very much. So, Sarah, I see you eat soup every day at work. Why are you eating soup every day? That's because I love to cook soup. So, you, you make the soup? Yes, it's very easy to make. So you cook it and then you just bring it to work every day? Yeah, I just make a lot on Monday and then I bring it to work every day of the week. Oh, nice. So how do you make the soup? What's your your secret? Well, I like to cook very easy. So I buy meat that's already cut up, usually chicken, and then some rice, usually brown rice. And then I buy some vegetables. So after I bought the ingredients, I chop them up. And I put them all together in water until it boils and add some seasoning. Okay. So you say the water boils. So as soon as the water boils, that's when you put in all the ingredients? Yes, that's right. So you don't put in the ingredients before the water boils? No, no. I guess it's just easier for the water to be hot because then the vegetables and the meat cook a little faster. So how do you give the soup flavoring? Um, I usually add salt and pepper, maybe some garlic, and depending on the type of soup, either maybe some soy sauce or lemon juice. Okay. Do you put in the flavoring after you put in the ingredients or before you put in the ingredients? Um... Maybe after, but usually right about all at the same time. Okay. So I just put everything in at one time. And then after you cook the soup, do you put the soup in the refrigerator? Do you let it sit outside? I usually eat some right then. <laughs> and I also put it in containers for the week. But I let it sit in the containers out on the counter for a while for it to cool okay. before I put it in the refrigerator. All right. And so you don't put it in the refrigerator until it is cool? Until it's about room temperature. Okay. Yeah. Nice. And then how do you heat it up? Do you heat it up in a pot or do you heat it up in the microwave? In the microwave. It's oh. the easiest. Yeah. Well, nice. So you make enough for five meals? Uh, maybe. Sometimes. Um, if I think I will get tired of eating it during the week, then maybe I'll just make enough for it three or four meals. But if it's some kind that I think is really delicious and I know I want to eat it every day, then I'll make a lot. Well, if that happens, when you make the soup, you can make it for six or seven and give me a bowl. Okay. I'll do that next time. Oh, great. Thanks. Hi, I'm Mari. I'm here with my friend Ron. Today we're talking about food. So Ron, what's your favorite cuisine? My favorite cuisine has to be Hawaiian food. I grew up eating Hawaiian food, so every special occasion we had Hawaiian food. So now when I eat Hawaiian food, it always brings back good memories. Uh, what exactly is Hawaiian food? Traditional Hawaiian food is usually cooked under the ground in a hole with hot rocks, and it cooks for maybe six hours or seven hours. And when you take it out, it's very salty because we use a lot of salt, and it tastes really good. Usually meat, usually pork, 
and other vegetables like taro and potato. So then, what's your favorite Hawaiian dish? My favorite Hawaiian dish is called lau lau. It's pork or fish wrapped in leaves and put inside the underground oven, and it's very salty and very good. So the flavor is just salt. The flavor is salt, and the, also the leaf flavor that it's wrapped in. Just hear me.、Uh, what's your favorite dessert or junk food? My favorite dessert has to be cake and ice cream together. I love to eat cake and ice cream together. What's your favorite ice cream flavor? Favorite ice cream flavor is strawberry. And I eat, and I like to eat that with chocolate cake. Hmm, sounds good. Um, do you like vegetables? Not so much. I don't like to eat vegetables, but I can eat them if somebody cooks them for me. What's your favorite vegetable? Favorite vegetable. I don't have a favorite vegetable, but I can eat vegetables like. Asparagus, broccoli, carrots, those types of things. Do you eat your vegetables raw, like salad, or do you prefer them cooked? I prefer them cooked. Thanks, Ron. Welcome. It's good. It's really good. Is that short? No, no, no. It's two minutes twenty. Meg, we are talking about traveling and visiting other countries. What countries have you traveled to? Ah, I've been to quite a few different countries.、Uh, for example, Spain, Belize, and Indonesia. Wow, three different continents. Yeah, pretty far apart. Wow, that's cool. So, Spain, that must be a really nice country. Mm. What did you think of Spain? Spain is really beautiful. There's a lot of beautiful nature and also some nice cities. While I was there, I lived in a small city called Casares. Oh, nice! Are the people really friendly in Spain?、Uh, yes, actually, the people are very friendly and very helpful, especially if you're lost. Oh, that's great! I hear Spanish food is really, really good. Mm, Spanish food is delicious. I lived with a Spanish family, and my Spanish mom cooked delicious meals every day for lunch. In Spain, seafood is really popular, so I ate a lot of fish and shrimp. Oh, I love fish and shrimp.、Mm, me too.、Mm. Now, Spain is really warm, right? Yes, Spain was very hot while I was there during the summer. Oh yeah, how hot? How hot does it get? It got up past forty degrees Celsius during the summer. Wow! Yeah, it was pretty hot. Does it rain? It does rain, but when I was there in the summer, it didn't rain very often. So, what about Belize? Belize is a really small country. Belize is very small, but it's also hot, similar to Spain in the summer. Why did you go to Belize? I went to Belize on a study trip for school, and I stayed there for about two weeks. Okay, now does Belize have good food? Belize also has good food. There was a family that cooked for us, and we had a lot of delicious,、um, almost Mexican type food. Oh, really? So, for example, what do you eat? Like, what do people eat in Belize?、Mm, people eat. It's kind of like a taco, but flat,、uh, with a tortilla and some meat. And vegetables on top, and some spices that make it really delicious. So the last country is Indonesia. When did you go to Indonesia? I actually went to Indonesia just last year. Oh whoa! How、mm-hmm. long did you stay? I only stayed there for about a week. Oh yeah! Oh short trip. Yeah, it was a short trip, but I was just visiting some friends there. Where did you go? I went to Jakarta and Bali.、Oh, okay, so. I hear Bali has really beautiful beaches. Is it true? Yeah, it's true. There are a lot of famous and beautiful beaches in Bali. Oh, did you surf in Bali? I've never surfed before. Usually, when I went to the beach, I just wanted to put my feet in the water. Oh yeah. Now Bali also has、uh, very famous scenery on the inside, like the rice fields. Did you see the rice fields of Bali? 
No, I didn't see the rice fields, but I did go to some famous historical spots. So, of the three countries, Spain, Belize, and Indonesia, what country was your favorite? Mm, maybe Spain was my favorite because I love learning language, and it was really nice to stay with my Spanish family. Yeah, I could see that. I really want to go to Spain, and I hope to go soon.、Mm, I hope you can go too. It's beautiful. Hey, Shirley. Hey, Josh. So, how was your weekend? Hmm, quite busy this weekend. Really? Those are hard. Yeah. So, what did you do on Saturday? Well, Saturday morning. I usually clean the house. Okay. Yeah, it's kind of boring, but I have to clean the bathroom and then the kitchen and then the lounge room because I have lots of cats. Okay. And the cats leave hair everywhere, so I always have to clean on Saturday mornings. Yes, cats are messy. Yeah. So after you cleaned, what did you do? Well, in the afternoon, I went for a walk up the mountain. It was a beautiful sunny day. There were no clouds in the sky. Wow! It was gorgeous. So I walked up the mountain, and I saw a ferret. A ferret? Yeah. Wow! They're a little, little furry animal, four legs, tail. Ah,、uh, not like a rabbit, but. About the same size as a rabbit. Okay. And they're kind of gold brown color. Wow! Did you see any other animals on your walk? Hmm. No,、okay. I didn't see any other animals on the ground. But I did see a beautiful bird flying in the sky. Wow! Do、yes. you know what kind? I think it was an ibis. It's a big bird that usually walks in the water. It has long legs, and it was white with a black head. Great. So after your walk, did you do anything else?、Um, I went home, and then I watched some TV. Okay. That was about it for my Saturday. Okay. What did you do on Sunday? Hmm. Sunday, I went to the art museum. Really? Yeah. Great. I really like to go and see new art, pictures or paintings or photographs, or sometimes sculptures. Okay. So, who's your favorite artist? Hmm. I don't really have a favorite artist, but I really like watercolors. Okay. So pictures that are painted with just soft, a kind of soft painting style. Do you like paintings of nature? I do like paintings of nature. I especially like paintings of flowers and animals. Okay. And places that have water, like lakes or rivers or the sea. Oh, that sounds like you had a great weekend. Yeah, it was good. Thanks. Okay. Hey, Todd. Did you have any pets when you were a kid? I did. I had many pets, actually.、Uh, I had a dog, of course,、mm. and I had some cats. But actually, I grew up on a farm. Yeah, so、uh, we raised lots of animals, and on the farm, I always felt like the animals were my pets. So it was pretty cool. Wow, that sounds really exciting for a kid. Oh, it was great. It was the best.、Mm, what kind of animals were on your farm? We had almost every, you know, farm animal possible.、Um, for example, we had pigs. We raised a lot of pigs, and pigs actually are really good pets. They're very fun.、Um, Pigs are very friendly animals, and they're not really dangerous. So,、uh, also pigs like people. So sometimes when we were little, we would ride on the pigs' back. But if our grandpa 
saw us riding on the pigs, he would yell at us. We always got in trouble. Uh oh. Yeah. Also, aren't pigs dirty? They are dirty. So when you would go in the pig pen, you would get very, very dirty. But you know, when you are small, when you are young, you don't care. It's just fun. Ah. What about other animals like chickens? We did have chickens and lots of chickens, and the chickens maybe were the least friendly animals. So chickens don't like people,、really? and the chickens you have to go get the eggs. So working with chickens was not easy, and I never really liked the chickens that much. Plus, the chickens you eat more often,、mm. so it's a little different. Right. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I don't think I've ever seen a chicken in person. Really? No. Oh wow! You must be a city girl. <laughs> I am. Although when I was young, I always wanted to have a horse. Did your farm have horses? We had one horse for a while,、uh, and then we had、uh, a pony. So, yeah, we had one horse and we had one pony. The pony was great because when I was little, we could ride the pony, but the pony was actually really mean. So the、oh. pony would bite you、Uh-oh. if you were not careful, and if you tried to ride the pony, sometimes the pony would get angry, very angry. But it's okay,、uh, you know, when you're small on a farm, it's normal.、Mm. Oh, that pony sounds scary. Were there any other animals that you had that were more friendly? Yeah, actually, the best pet you can have is a goat. Really, a goat? Yeah, goats are fantastic. Goats love people. They really, really love people, and they're very social. And goats follow people. So when you are little on the farm, and when you walk around, the goats become your friend. So when I was little, I would walk, and I had friendly goats that would follow me everywhere, and they were great. And they're very curious.、Mm-hmm. They like to see what you're doing, and、uh, yeah. And they like to be petted. So you know how, like, you pet a dog, you pet a cat. Goats also like for you to pet them. They're very, very social. And it's interesting because goats and sheep are kind of similar, but really they're very different. So goats are very social. Goats are very friendly, and sheep are very shy. And sheep don't like people at all. So sheep stay away from people, and goats always get close to people. Hmm. Sounds like a goat is a good pet to have. Goats are the best. They are so friendly, and goats are cool because goats talk to you. So they like to make a sound. You know, like ba. They ba or whatever. They make a sound. <laughs> uh-huh. And, uh huh. And when you walk around as a young boy or young girl, the goats are great. They follow you, and you feel like the goat is talking to you, which is cool. That sounds really fun. Now I wish I had some goats. <laughs> yeah, you got to. The only other animal we had. Um, we also had cows,、oh. and cows are cool. Some cows are friendly. Most cows are shy,、uh, but cows, you know, they always come to you because they think they will get food. But、mm. if they see you have no food, then cows stay away. So cows, like sheep, are a little afraid of people. Oh. But pigs and goats love people, and they're very social. Oh, it sounds really cool growing up on a farm. It was, it was. I was lucky. So, Meg, do you live in a house or an apartment? I live in an apartment near the train station. Oh, you live downtown. I do. Ah, do you like living downtown? I do like living downtown because it's so convenient. Everything is close by: grocery stores, the mall, the station. Oh, that's great! So,、yeah. what about your apartment? Do you have a nice apartment? It's a nice apartment, but it's really small. Oh yeah, how many rooms? Well, there are three rooms, but each room is pretty small.、Mm-hmm. There's a bedroom, a sitting room, like a living room, and The kitchen room. Oh wow! So in your bedroom, like, do you have like a big queen size bed, a small bed? I have a small twin size bed or a single bed in the bedroom because it's pretty small, so there's not much space for a big bed. All right. So do you have a TV in your bedroom? No, actually, I don't own a TV at all. Really? So there's no TV in the living room too. There's no TV anywhere in the apartment. Wow! What do you do in your house?、Uh, I have a laptop computer, so usually I can watch some TV shows or videos on my laptop. Oh right. Okay. Do you like to like watch movies in bed? 
Uh, yeah, sometimes I like to watch movies in bed, or sometimes I prefer to sit in the living room and watch movies. Right. So you must have high-speed internet. I do, yes. I have an internet box that my laptop can connect to. Okay, cool. Do you have a nice big sofa? Uh, I have two small sofas, so you can push them together to make one big sofa, or you can keep them separate. Usually I keep them separate because there's more room for people to sit on. Okay. Now, you like to cook, so you must have a nice kitchen. Mm, unfortunately, I have a very tiny kitchen. Oh, no. How There's, do you cook? <laughs> I, I have to use some extra tables to have more space. The counter is really small, so there's not much space. So I have an extra table I use for preparing the food. Okay. Do you have an oven? I have a very small toaster oven, so it's not really an oven. Oh, uh, right. Mm -hmm. So do you have a microwave? I do have a microwave and a small refrigerator and one burner, like a stovetop burner. Okay. Do you cook every night? I don't cook every night. Sometimes I'm too busy, and sometimes because my kitchen is so small, I get a little frustrated. So I just pick up some food from a restaurant. Oh, right. Now, you live in an apartment. So how many floors does your apartment building have? The building has five floors, and I live on the fifth floor. Nice. Fifth yeah. floor. Yeah, the view is nice, but unfortunately, there's no elevator. So you always oh, have no. to take the stairs. Wow, five flights of stairs. Five flights of stairs every day, but it's good exercise. So you're on the fifth floor. Do you have a balcony? I have a small balcony where my washing machine is, and I can also hang up my laundry out there. Oh, cool. Washing oh. machine's outside. It is outside. It's a little different from my house in America. Oh, so from your view, what can you see? I can see the train station from one window and uh, all the restaurants downtown. And from a different window, I can see the mountains. Oh, nice. Yeah, the mountains are nice. Yeah, it's really pretty.